If you're studying for your A-plus certification, one of the most important things you can do to ensure you pass that exam is building a home lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a home lab relatively cheap or pretty cheap, I would think, that's going to give you everything you're going to need to practice everything in the course. You know, I always tell students this. If you listen to me in the class, I always say this. A certification only gets you a job interview. You have an A-plus on your resume is absolutely great. You're probably going to get a job interview. What's going to actually get you that job is your skills. What's going to allow you to keep your job is the skill. Don't take a certification and don't pass a certification just to be certified. Get the certification for the skill. Remember, certification validates skills. How are you going to get the skills if you're not working? By doing all the labs. Now, if you take my A-plus course, you notice I do tons of labs in the actual course itself. Follow along in those labs. Now, let's go ahead and get started. I'm Andrew Ramdial, and I'm the creator of some of the best e-learning courses with thousands of students enrolled in them. And uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to mention is that, once again, A+, if you don't know this, is broken basically into two exams. The Core 1, what's known as 220-1101, and Core 2, 220-1102. Now, the first, the first exam, Core 1, that you should be doing first is really concentrated a lot on hardware. And then Core 2 is really concentrated a lot on software. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to get both hands on. Right? How do we build a lab to do both? Let's get started with the first one, core one. Now, hardware. Hardware scares a lot of people. In the course, I go through step-by-step -step videos of me disassembling the machines and putting them back together. I build a full-fledged computer for you in the core one class. If you watch the videos, you'll notice you see me build that entire machine. Now, if you don't want to go out and build a machine and it's the first time you're doing this, I don't recommend for you to go and buy the parts and go build a machine if you have never done it before. What you should be doing is getting a broken one. So here's what I did. I went to eBay and I looked up desktops, all right? I just typed in desktops is what I really looked, uh, looked in here for, right? I just had desktop computers. And I found this machine at, 70, at $77. And basically it's a fully functional desktop, all right? This desktop works. All right, what you guys should do is buy something like this. I don't recommend spending more than 80 bucks. I mean, even that's a lot. And this is free shipping, all right, to me. I'm in Garden City, Long Island, and this is free shipping, so it'll cost you about $80. Now, this, this computer actually works. What you guys should do, if you have never done hardware before, is buy a desktop like this. Buying a desktop like this is going to allow you to take it apart and put it back together and take out the RAM and take out the hard drive and take out the processor makes you very comfortable with the hardware. The more you play with it, the more sense it will make. Trust me on this. You're not going to regret it. It'll break the fear that you have of managing hardware. Now, get a desktop, not a Mac, a Windows desktop. Your exam has very little Mac, so we're not doing Macs here. We're talking all Windows machines because it's really what the business world uses. So get something like this. If you can find something for 60 bucks, it's fine. It doesn't have to be a modern machine, guys. The machines I, were build, I was building when I was little in 1999, my first computer, I think 97, that machine that is a 97 is basically the same machine we have today. Motherboard looks the same. CPUs look the same. Everything is just maybe smaller. The components are the same. RAM, motherboard, CPU, some kind of hard drive or solid state drive or something. They're all always going to be the same. Once you know how to work on one PC, PC you can pretty much work on all or you can figure out how to work, how to work on all. By doing this lab, you're going to be able to break the fear of hardware. Okay, now comes the second thing that you need for a lab is a good machine. You need a good workable machine. That way, you can install virtual machines on it. Now, what are virtual machines? Well, that I'm going to keep for another video. That you're going to have. If you go through my course, you'll see what they are. So virtual machines allow you to install different operating systems and to play around with the utilities. Different versions of Windows, Linux. You can even virtualize Mac. Shh, don't see anything, but technically you could. So what happens is you should need a good computer to get your journey, right? Because this machine you want to use to do all the labs in A+. I have a Net Plus class coming out soon for your Security Plus. If you're doing Cisco, you're going to have Packet Tracer and all these software you're using. So you want a good machine. Now, what's a good computer for A+. Well, 
I'm going to give you guys some specs that I recommend. And you guys, and then I'm going to show you guys what I found on the internet. Then I'm going to show you guys where you can go and build your own. The specs I recommend, at least I'm talking Intel machines here. All right, get if you know CPUs, you can also get the equivalent AMD. I'm not going to get into AMD. I'm not a big fan of AMD. I'm more of an Intel person. But whatever I tell you, if you want the AMD version of it, you can actually just Google the AMD version of that. So I would recommend at least an i5, not an i3. Get at least an i5 processor. Uh, doesn't really matter the generation too much. Uh, get uh, 16 gigs of RAM. These are minimum. So if you get an i7 or i9, great. But a minimum is an i5. Minimum I want you guys to get is going to be uh, 16 gigs of RAM. And on the hard drive, I want you guys to have a one terabyte SSD, solid state drive. Those are my minimums. I know you could go down to 500 gig SSD, but because you're installing a lot of virtual machines, you're going to need a lot of hard drive space. So once again, minimum is an i5, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD on the actual machines. Now, how much is this going to cost? A good machine for you to do labs. Notice, by the way, for you gamers, I didn't mention a video card. I said a 4090. I think this machine here, I have a 4080 or 4090 in it. This is not about playing games. When you're doing these labs, the output of the video really doesn't matter because you're just looking at operating system utilities. We're not rendering a lot of things. What we need is a lot of RAM. So at a minimum, 16 gigs of RAM. I would like for you guys to have 32 gigs of RAM. And I'm going to show you the specs on this machine that I'm using in a second. And this machine runs all of my, all the labs I do for all the courses that I teach. So let's go here. Um, let's take a look at some of the deals here. So I went to Best Buy and I found a Dell Inspiron. Now, no, I don't care about brand names, guys. I don't, when I'm buying a laptop, listen, I've had Dell. I just bought a Samsung laptop. I've had HP, I've had Lenovo. It doesn't matter to me what the, the brand is. They're generally good brands. And if you take care of them, they'll last. So I found this one on sale. And I went with a smaller screen to make sure it's portable. So this is an i7. And again, you could go down i5. This is a one terabyte SSD. And we get 16 gigs of RAM in this machine for 849. It's on clearance. I think this is a great machine. Uh, you guys can check this one out. Uh, so, and it's, you know, it's just a Dell laptop that, and you can actually go down. So remember, we don't care too much about the video card. It is an entry level video card in here because we're not playing games. This kind of laptop can run all your labs for coming up to almost every certification that you're going to be doing for quite a while. What I would do though, is increase this to 32 gigs of RAM. So when you're comfortable with your hard drive, push that up to 32 gigs of RAM and you got a machine that can run tons of virtual machines on it. Now, when it comes to desktops, I don't recommend laptops. I actually, I live a weird lifestyle. I actually have a desktop that I never turn off. In my house, I have a desktop that is never, ever turned off. It's always on. And my laptops, I used to remote into my desktop. I'm always working on my desktop. My laptops actually don't do anything. They, they're only used for when I'm sitting there or I'm sitting over there. I'm sitting in a coffee shop somewhere. I just connect to my home. I just use my desktop at home. So desktops allows you to have much more power, less money. Uh, and, you know, one of the things with uh, laptops is they throttle the speed down because as they get hot, the speed actually has to decrease so the machine doesn't overheat. But when you have a desktop, the great things about desktops is that they don't do that. You always basically have your full power blast. So let's take a look at, uh, at this desktop here. This one I found for $949. I remember the budget here I was thinking was like $1,000. This one has, has 16 gigs of RAM. It's a one terabyte SSD. This is an i7 processor. This is a later generation than this one. This is a 13 generation. This is a, a 14 generation. Now, let me tell you guys something. The desktop processors versus the uh, laptop processors is quite, even though they have the same generation and they have the same clock speed, trust me, the desktops can perform a lot quicker on that. So this one here meets my specifications. Now, this is if you want to buy machines. Listen, if you purchase that machine off of eBay and you want to then say to my say to yourself, well, I want to build my own machine. I'm comfortable with hardware. Andrew, I want to build my own machine. Then build what build the minimum specification. If I were you, you can go right now to my favorite website. Everybody knows I'm a gearhead and I love this kind of 
uh, gear stuff. Um, when I'm buying, especially like I'm buying video cards, I'm not a big hardware person, but if I'm building a machine, this is the site I come to, newegg.com. I'm not being sponsored anywhere for this. It's, I've been using this website since the early 2000s, maybe since nine, maybe since 2000s I've been using this website. And um, you can go here and you can buy all the parts. You can come in here and they have a PC builder page, all right? So this is pretty cool because you can actually put the PC together and build and customize it with Intel and you can sub this entry level system and you can customize it or what I do is I just go here and I just go to menu and I just start building it right so core components what do we need you need a CPU you need a motherboard so the first thing is you got to decide on what CPU you want so I'm going to go in here and notice you have all these risings I'll say an Intel Core i7 and you can play around with this to however you want all right here's a super fast 14 generation Intel this is only 388 so you can start building building it uh, using this and put all your parts together. I'm pretty sure you can get a better machine, a much more powerful machine than what you're buying from Best Buy or you're buying from Dell if you want to build it. But remember, you don't have the support of Dell or the warranty of Dell. So if a component breaks, you got to know how to troubleshoot all that. Maybe it's a great exercise. Remember, in the course, you see me build a PC step-by-step -step in the first and the core one. Then I show you guys how to install Windows in the core two, and we go through all the utilities and all that. I like building machines. You get better bang for your buck if you build your machine yourself. If you purchase something from Dell, you're gonna have to take what they give you, the hardware, and then you may even have to spend a little bit of money to upgrade that Windows to a higher version of Windows that best matches your exam. Okay, that's the video. If you guys found value in this, or you guys are getting value in this, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, check out my A plus courses. All the links are below. Now, last thought here, when it comes to building your lab, don't overthink it. Build a lab, don't be super cheap. Spend a few hundred bucks extra, all right? I'm telling you guys, if I was building a lab, you know, I forgot to mention my ideal lab is it gonna be an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabyte SSD. That's my ideal NVMe all the way that's gonna be my ideal lab, all right? That's what I have on this machine. I forgot to tell you, I forgot to show you guys what this machine is running. So this machine I just built a couple, couple months ago. This machine here uh, is a 13th generation Intel i9. It's 32 gigs of RAM in it. Uh, and it has a two terabyte SSD. How much this machine costs? A little under $2,000, but it has a super video card in it. A 4090 because Andrew likes to play games maybe once in a while. We do video editing on this machine too. So this machine is gonna be a little bit expensive because of its video card, but you don't need that video card. I would highly suggest to spend that couple extra bucks and go out there and get yourself a really good machine because remember, it's an investment in your future. Guys, now I'm done. Give the video a like and I'll see you guys in the next video.